happy Thanksgiving to our next guest making his triumphant return to the Up and Adam show. Hey, Daniel Jones. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? Don't ask me. How's it going with you? <laughs> uh, I'm doing good. Doing good. Um, yeah, just uh, been rehabbing and, and uh, getting ready for surgery, doing surgery uh, up here tomorrow. So getting ready for that. So you're in, you're doing it in New York? I am, yeah. I'm doing it up here. Day before Thanksgiving surgery? You don't want to hold off till next Monday, bud? Come on. <laughs> no, it's the best time for it. And um, got a lot of football to watch while I'm, while I'm laid up. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, did you watch football last night? I did, yeah. I watched the game. Uh, that was a good game. Uh, more defensive than I thought it would be, but it was a definitely a good game. Dude, if the Chiefs make it, it's uh, because of their defense, and I can't believe that I'm saying that. But I was watch. I was like, oh my gosh, if they make it to the Super Bowl, it's their defense leading it all the way. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I, their defense is playing playing really well, obviously. But uh, I wouldn't, uh, you know, Pat Mahomes <laughs> is going to get rolling here pretty soon, and and that's uh, <laughs> hard to, hard to beat him when he's rolling. <laughs> I love, I love that the, the Chiefs lost. You're speaking highly of them after the Eagles won because you just can't, you can't say anything nice about the Eagles side, Daniel. You just can't. <laughs> part of it. Part of nope. it. Part of it. <laughs> can't, can't, can't say it. Okay, so you're having surgery, and then what? So give me like a like a timeline process. So you're rehabbing a little, I guess, to get set for surgery. I don't know much about this kind of stuff. So then, like, what is the what does the schedule look like? Like, after yeah. So surgery. just. Um, uh, yeah, so just try, you know, before surgery, just trying to get the swelling out, get the range of motion back. Um, and then, yeah, going in for surgery tomorrow. And then it's about a, you know, uh, you know, eight to nine to 10 month recovery period. So, um, you know, we'll attack that and, and approach that, work on that, you know, day by day and um, try to get back as fast as I can. And your time will be spent. Uh, watching Will Ferrell movies, I'm sure. Outside of kicking and screaming, what are the Will Ferrell movies I need to be watching or that you will be watching? Elf is on uh, nonstop right yeah, now. Yeah, Elf's coming up. It's Christmas time, so you got to watch some, watch Elf. Um, I don't know. I don't. Uh, you're, you're making me a big Will Ferrell guy. I don't know if I'm a big Will Ferrell guy. I'm a big kicking and screaming guy. Uh, okay, got it. But, uh, got it. but I, yeah, I'll watch some Elf maybe uh, coming up. Are you a Thanksgiving guy? Uh, yeah, I like <laughs> Thanksgiving. I got the, uh, my family will come up here to New York and we'll be able to spend some time together, uh, Thanksgiving. So looking forward to that. Is Tommy DeVito inviting your family over for chicken parm <laughs> on Thanksgiving? <laughs> uh, I haven't gotten that, haven't gotten that invite. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's been fun watching DeVito. He's been, been playing well and big time win for us, uh, on Sunday down in Washington. So that was fun to watch. Tell me about this DeVito character. Everyone's obsessed with like the off the field, you know, the parm, the this, like what makes this kid tick? He's got the, you know, he's got that kind of, kind of edge to him. He's got a swagger to him and uh, he's confident, um, but you know, super hardworking, good dude, um, you know, has come in and, and uh, you know, been, you know, done everything that, that he could to, to improve and continue to, to grow. And uh, you know, that's why he's been ready for, for this, uh, these last few games. So uh, it's been fun, fun working with him in the room and uh, he's a good player. What kind of stands out about him? I mean, even just from the performance that he had last week or in that quarterback room where, you know, you're helping him get ready. Um, I think it's, I think it's his, his confidence and, and kind of his edge. Uh, you know, like I was saying, he's got that. And I think that's kind of, uh, kind of natural part, part of him, part of who he is. And, and he's always had that. And, um, I think that helps when you get on the field and, and you're out playing as a guy, you know, without a ton of experience, I think that that helps. And, um, you saw it on Sunday. Yeah. And I think, you know, you, having you in there and you were so, uh, not, uh, what do I want to say? Like you were so effusive 
and enthusiastic about what Tyrod Taylor brings in that quarterback room. Like, y'all are just trying to get wins for this team that wants and deserves wins, however you can get them. And I bet you being in there is really helpful. I got to tell you, I hate, I, hate the, I hate what happened to you. Like, I just hate it. And last time we saw you on our show, you were, we were excited. You're healed up from the neck injury. You get the start against the Raiders. You injure your knee on the last play of the first quarter. I want to get into a little bit of, like, how you chose to go back into the game the very next play. Like, it get, you know, like take me through the sequence of events of, of that play and what happened there. Uh, yeah, so the, the last play of the first quarter, uh, tried to make a cut, step up, and, and I felt, um, felt my knee kind of like shift or buckle uh, weird. I hadn't really felt that before, but it didn't hurt. Uh, didn't hurt that bad. You know, I got up and in between quarters, I jogged and made some light cuts and, uh, you know, felt like uh, I was going to, you know, give it a shot and, and, and see, see if it would hold up. And then I got, you know, the next play, tried to put my foot in the ground on my drop and felt that same kind of buckle or shift. And uh, I knew something was up at that point. So, um, yeah, it was tough, tough break, um, tough, tough, uh, you know, obviously worked hard to get back from the neck injury and, and be out there and then tough break to have that happen. But it's, you know, part of the game and, um, you know, a lot of guys go through it and a lot of guys come back uh, come back stronger. So, uh, that's my goal and, and, uh, just gonna do everything I can to get back. So when coach Dable comes over to you on the sideline and it was, I think in that first quarter break and he tell you know, you, you, you told him you're good to go and you weren't, uh, what was going through your head as a competitor? So I hope I'm good. Uh, you know, you don't really know. I think that's, that's, uh, part of it. You don't really know exactly what is going on. And, uh, you know, I think I was, you know, something could be up here, um, but you don't really know. And, and I wasn't going to leave the game not knowing. So, you know, I had to had to make sure, um, you know, that, it, you know, that I needed to leave the game. And, and so that was that was part of that. Um, but as a competitor, you're going to do everything you can to stay on the field and um, and uh, and be out there. Um, so just just try to give it a shot and make sure make sure that I couldn't go, I guess. I mean, we've seen so many season-ending injuries for quarterbacks that we know and love. You among them, with Rodgers to kick it off week one against the Bills in your building. Cousins, Burrow, Watson. The league doesn't like it. Fans hate it. We have all these rules to protect quarterbacks. Like, is there any? Like, what's the lesson in all of this? Because this isn't what we want, you know? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, a, a lot of them aren't really contact, That you know, contact injuries or, uh, things that you can prevent from a, you know, rule standpoint. Um, I don't, I don't know. I think it's part of the game, part of playing football and, uh, guys are going to get hurt. It's part of, part of the game. So, um, I don't know, you know, what else you can really do. You think about those examples with Rogers and Burrow and not as familiar with Deshaun's injury, but, uh, just not sure yeah. what, what you can do from a rule standpoint. Yeah, and now we've got Mr. DeVito in there. He's doing his thing. You're resting up. You're rehabbing. He's got the this thing. Everybody, how Jersey is he really? Like, what's the most Jersey thing about Mr. DeVito? <laughs> most Jersey thing about him? Well, he's uh, he definitely is Jersey. Um, he's a big, like, black tank top, uh, gold chain. I remember <laughs> we did our throwing trip. We did our throwing trip in uh, Charlotte this summer. Um before the season started and he was, he was on the plane in his black, black tank top and gold chain. And I mean, he's Jersey to the core. You're like, it's not October. You're not, it's not, you're not dressing as a situation for Halloween. Like what is going on here? So he's, <laughs> he's quite a character. So who he, who we're seeing is who he is. That's who he is. That's who he is. hundred <laughs> percent. We love seeing it. Listen, Chris Collinsworth is on our show. And, you know, as I was thinking of the names of these quarterbacks that have gone down, he said that as soon as uh, a quarterback signs a contract, a big one with a team, a well-deserved one by everybody, it's the market, that it puts a target on your back. Did you feel or do you feel like added pressure after the Giants sort of locked you in? Like, what's your experience like with finally signing that contract? Um, well, I mean, I think, um, playing in New York and playing quarterback, there's always, there's always pressure. Um, you know, since I was drafted, I felt that, you know, you feel the responsibility to, to play well and, and lead the team to win games. So, uh, yeah, signing the contract this off season, um, you, you still feel that and, and, uh, 
yeah, there's certainly some pressure and responsibility that comes with that. And, uh, you know, I felt that I feel that I understand that. And I take that seriously. I don't think that's something to, to shy away from. Um, you know, I've got, I know I've got to, got to play well and, and, uh, lead the mm -hmm. team to win games. Is like, how do, I don't know, as far as the process, like you're having surgery, you said like eight to 10 months, what is the dance? Like the dynamics to the dance? I know you leave it to your agents, but like, Obviously, the Giants, they're kind of in position if they want to to grab a top five pick. I'm saying that to you. You know that. You're a smart guy. What Do those talks start now? When do those talks sort of, or what has it been like as far as your future? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm more focused uh, kind of day to day on what I'm doing uh, here and, and trying to trying to get healthy. Uh, you know, has been getting ready for this surgery and then, you know, it, it'll be recovering from this from the surgery going forward. So, um you know, how that all works out is, is down the road a ways. And, um, you know, I don't have a ton of control over it. So just, just focus on what I can do to, to get back. Yeah, and uh, it's good that you're saying that. But in talking about your future with the Giants, yeah, I don't know if you saw this, but um, Eli Manning told uh, the Marshand and Oran podcast that the Giants need to put more trust and talent around you because this last year isn't a reflection of who you are as a player. What do you feel like when you hear that? Because the truth is, I mean, I'm looking at even just the numbers, all of that, like, you know, your sacks, it's stupid. Like, Saquon wasn't there a bunch of games. You took a beating all season. Your O-line was beat up all season long. So would you agree that some of this criticism that you're getting or that you would be getting or is unfair and that Eli's right? Um, well, I mean, I think, um, you know, every team in the league deals with – injuries they deal with uh you know situations that aren't perfect and and the job is to uh overcome those and and win win anyway play well anyway so um yeah i didn't didn't play well enough didn't do enough for us to to put us in position to win games and i know that um you know i know i've got to play better and, and i'm focused on on shoring that up and and working on the things that i need to do to improve um you know so um as far as how i feel about the criticism or, or what people are saying, um, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm kind of more focused on what, what I need to do. And I, I know I got to play better. I think it's a big deal that Eli said that. Is that a, like that kind of an endorsement? I mean, you guys have a relationship. He's a legend. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, uh, appreciate, <laughs> appreciate it. He's helped me a ton. Well, okay. You know, hold these on. Past I, few mean, years here I don't know if you heard. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers said that you don't get that the Giants don't get enough criticism. So let's not even make this about you. Did you hear him say that? <laughs> uh, I didn't hear him say that. No. He did. He says, "Why are the Jets getting so much criticism, but the Giants, like somehow, like they don't get anything? Nobody's talking about it that much." He literally said, "The Giants suck, and nobody is talking about it as much." That was his quote. <laughs> I don't. Know. I mean, I don't know. I guess he's trying to trying to. Uh deflect some from attention from the Jets. He's trying to start something. Uh, okay, so Thanksgiving. Talk to me about Thanksgiving food because we're going to go back to this because we saw there's an Instacart, which you've never used because you don't even like use any social media or know what's going on. An Instacart poll revealed the least favorite Thanksgiving side dishes for Americans. So here we go. These are the least favorite ones. Candied yams, green bean casserole, cranberry sauce. Soup. Like, What do you make of this list? Are you like, or, is this right or wrong? The fact that sweet potato casserole is up there is unacceptable. I, green bean casserole would be my least favorite, but sweet potato casserole is like one Agreed. of the best, I feel like. It's not cool. Okay, so perfect Thanksgiving meal. I know for you would be like nerd ropes with a side of Reese's Pieces, but what's your number <laughs> one overall Thanksgiving? Let's go Thanksgiving side dish, your number one overall draft pick, and the number one, and uh, well, you already said the least favorite ones, green bean casserole, in which you're right as usual. I would say mac and cheese would be my first overall pick. Uh, mac and cheese is up there. I mean, sweet potato casserole for me is up there. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Definitely top two. Do you do you call it dressing or um, or stuffing? Your southern boy. I think it was it was always dressing at my grandmother's uh, table. It was always dressing. <laughs> So are you guys going to watch these games? What is it like on Thanksgiving watching uh, with your family? Uh, yeah, I uh, can't say I've done it a ton. Uh, you know, obviously yeah. I have a lot of memories as a kid 
uh, growing up and you're always watching the, watching the Thanksgiving games. Um, but as of, you know, recent, probably since I've been at Duke, I haven't really watched a ton of, ton of football on Thursdays with, uh, with the family, but, um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun. I don't even, I don't even know who's playing. I guess da- Dallas is playing. The Lions are playing. I don't know who they're playing, but, um, it'll be good to spend some time with them and watch some football. I'll leave it as a surprise. We want you to heal up and feel great. And if you, let me ask you this. If you had to trust one Giants teammate to be in, sp- in charge and responsible for your family's Thanksgiving meal, like they're cooking, they're arranging it, who would you pick? Um, cooking and arranging it. Maybe, maybe Ben Bredesen. I feel like you got to go with an offensive lineman. Okay. You know, uh, yeah, <laughs> Ben Bredesen, Andrew Thomas, <laughs> maybe put those two guys together. Yeah, put those two guys together. are not going to leave you guys any food to eat for your entire family. That's a bad call <laughs> by you, Daniel Jones. Heal up. Surgery tomorrow. Wishing you all the best. Let us all know how you're feeling uh, after that and have a happy Thanksgiving. All the best. This is, uh, of course, just a chapter in the book. Awesome. Appreciate it, Kay. Happy Thanksgiving.